If you could live forever, would you? Throughout history, money has allowed the elite to buy just about anything they want, except an escape from death. Many super rich individuals are deeply haunted by the knowledge that they have spent their lives working incredibly hard to accumulate vast amounts of wealth, but they have only very limited amount of time in which to enjoy it. As a result, many of them are absolutely obsessed with finding a way to cheat death. This report comes from Michael Snyder over at the Economic Collapse blog and he writes, The quest for eternal life is very much alive today, especially in tech hotbeds such as Silicon Valley. As technology continues to increase at an exponential rate, many among the elite are absolutely convinced that eternal life will be possible someday and they are determined to stick around long enough to be a part of that revolution. We are going to become gods, period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute, you don't have to participate. But if you're gonna interfere with me becoming God, you're gonna have big trouble and we'll have warfare. The only way you can prevent me in this, in this 50 or is to kill me. If you kill me, I'll kill you. One way that some ultra wealthy people are attempting to extend their lifespans into the future is through the emerging science of cryogenics. Uh, some are having their entire bodies frozen and others are having just their brains frozen, but it is very expensive. It's been a plot device used in television shows for decades. The crew discovers frozen survivors from the 20th century. They're people. They're people. What the hell is this place? Fiction is closer to real life than you may think. There's seven people in this one and ten in this one. At the Cryonics Institute in Clinton Township, the nitrogen-filled tanks don't have windows, only photos provide a glimpse of the patients cryogenically preserved inside, hoping one day to be revived and restored to good health. Forever isn't necessarily the goal. The goal is longer. For believers in cryonics, death isn't permanent, just an illness waiting for a cure. There's so many things that I, I'd like to do with my life and, and life is really short. That's one reason financial planner Joe Kowalski of Berkeley wants to give cryonics a shot. I will be frozen um, at least temporarily is the hope. Interest in cryonics is steadily growing. We have a lot of people in their 20s that are signing up. Some don't want to wake up in the future all alone. You've got 140 people. How many pets do you have? About 120. Really? Yeah. 120 pets. It might sound strange, but to some people, taking your dog to a daycare sounds strange. While reviving a person or a pet after being frozen solid sounds far-fetched, it's happened before. Just last winter in below zero temps, 26-year-old Justin Smith was found blue and lifeless in a Pennsylvania snowbank 12 hours after he'd gone missing. The coroner was on scene, the state police was on scene. They were doing essentially a death investigation. All signs lead, to, lead us to believe that he's been dead for a considerable amount of time. Not giving up, a local doctor used a special machine to warm his blood and then pump it back into his body, thawing Smith and then bringing him back to life. He lost his toes, but surprisingly has no brain damage. It was like I woke up from a dream, but it wasn't a dream, you know? That's the idea of cryonics, with one very big difference. Legally, to free someone on purpose, they have to be declared dead first. The moment that happens in a perfect situation, the person can then be placed in a portable ice bath like this one to cool, while a heart and lung machine keep the blood and oxygen flowing. You want to keep the blood flowing while they're cooling down, for two reasons, it keeps oxygenated blood going to the cells to keep them alive so that what you're freezing is living, not, not something dead. When the body's core temperature reaches 10 degrees, blood is removed and replaced with a cryoprotective solution. Then the body is frozen and stored vertically, head down in an insulated nitrogen-filled tank. It could take decades or centuries before medicine advances enough to make even an attempt at revival possible. Freezing damage would have to be repaired. They'd have to, you'd have to cure what they died from. There's a lot of things to overcome, but there's been a lot of things they've overcome already in medicine. If it does work, there's the religious question. What happens to all these souls between now and then? 
Andy Zawacki looks to his Catholic faith. If God knows no time limits and time is infinite, you know, can't, can't he put your soul on hold for an hour or a hundred years or a thousand years? Kowalski is Jewish and thinks God would support any medical treatment that could have saved the life of his grandfather. He had a heart blockage. They knew where it was. They knew what it was. They didn't know how to do a bypass. If he had lived 10 more years, he might still be alive today. This science has implications far beyond just bringing people back to life. The Cryo Prize is currently offering $50,000 to the first person who can freeze an organ like a heart or a liver, thaw it, and successfully transplant it. The federal government is funding research into the very same thing. And even though nobody has ever been successfully brought back, there is a very fervent belief that someday in the future it will be possible to return to the land of the living and experience a whole new life. One businessman believes that he will wake up in the near future and experience a whole new life after having his head placed on the body of another human being. You know, we understand that we're living in the last days. The Bible clearly tells us that there will come a time where the mark of the beast will be implemented around the world, that the false peacemaker, the Antichrist, will mandate a new society where no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast or the image of his name. But anyone who's, who does not take this mark will be beheaded. Is this the reason why beheading is the option or the go-to method of execution? So the bodies can be used for this type of coming back to life for those who are currently dead. One of the largest cryogenics companies is the Alcor Life Extension Foundation located in Scottsdale, Arizona. It is already storing 149 dead bodies and it has more than 1,000 paying members overall. Cryogenics is one method that is being pursued, but it's not the only one. Transhumanists such as Ray Kurzweil are absolutely convinced that singularity will soon enable people to live indefinitely. Ray Kurzweil is here. He has been called the rightful heir to Thomas Edison. His new book is entitled The Singularity is Near when humans transcend biology. I, I read your book, some of the most frightening and yet hopeful stuff I've ever read. Ray Kurzweil is a pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence. He's an award-winning scientist and engineer, a millionaire several times over because of his invention. He's the holder of 24 patents. Ray Kurzweil was chief inventor of the flatbed scanner. A reading machine for the blind, Kurzweil keyboard synthesizer. This guy is freaky. Bill Gates has called him the best in the world at predicting the future. When Ray Kurzweil makes a prediction, lots of folks listen. He predicted the collapse of the Soviet Union, described the rise of the internet, and foretold the year a computer would beat a chess champion. According to Ray, you're going to have relationships with machines. Computers will have consciousness in just 25 years. Kurzweil sees a day when microscopic computers will make all kinds of learning as easy as downloading. You're saying millions of tiny computers floating around in my head? Fundamentally, you're talking about tampering with humankind. Inventor Ray Kurzweil thinks that one day humans may be able to live forever. We come back to this book, to the singularity is near. What does singularity mean? When you say uh, uh, the singularity is coming, what does that mean exactly? And that's what you mean by the term singularity? What is singularity? Singularity is a future period which technological change will be so rapid and its impact so profound that every aspect of human life will be irreversibly transformed. There won't be a clear distinction between humans and machines. Our computers are not going to be these rectangular devices we put in our pocket. They're going to be inside our bodies and brains, and we're going to be a hybrid of biological and non-biological intelligence. If you go back 500 years, not much happened in a century. Now a lot happens in six months. Technology feeds on itself, and it gets faster and faster. In about 40 years, the pace of change is going to be so astonishingly quick that you won't be able to follow it unless you enhance your own intelligence by merging with the intelligent technology we're creating. So that's such a profound transformation that we borrowed this metaphor from physics and call that a singularity.
while Russian billionaire Dmitry Itzkov wants to rip our brains out and put them into robots. A Russian internet millionaire funded a conference in New York with an extraordinary aim, to see if a system could be created that would allow him to live forever. Meet the Immortalist. My name is Dmitry Itzkov. Within the next 30 years, I'm going to make sure that we can all live forever. I am 100% confident it will happen. Professor Hiroshi Ichiguru went to Dimitri's conference in 2013. It's a vision of the future some may find unsettling. Just like digital computers use zeros and ones to transmit information, neurons fire these little spikes. So it's a system of uh, interconnected cells, and you have to imagine them as, as flashes of light, which are actually voltages that are propagating like waves through the brain. Meet Eric Sorto. Deep inside his brain are two arrays of electrodes. On January the 2nd, 2002, I suffered a gunshot, which left me paralyzed from the shoulders down. Scientists from Caltech are connecting Eric's brain to computers, which will decode what he's thinking. Eric, you are ready to go. All right. The team check they are recording the activity of a tiny number of individual neurons out of the 86 billion that make up his brain. When you go reach for something, you don't walk it step by step, you just do it. Once the arm has grasped the bottle, Eric thinks, bring hand to mouth again. <laughs> All right. Hey, you finish that thing off? <laughs> That's good. His progress in this extraordinary trial has extended what it is to be human. Yay! <laughs> there you go. The ultimate goal of my plan is to transfer someone's personality into the new artificial carrier. The brain generates all of our behavior, but also generates all of our mental world. It generates our mind. And now the challenge is precisely to how to go from a physical substrate of cells that are connected and all together inside this organ to our mental world. If we were somehow given a structural synaptic diagram today of a whole human brain, we wouldn't be able to do much with it. As a start, Raphael is focusing on mapping the neural activity of a tiny freshwater invertebrate. The idea that you can upload the mind assumes that the mind is some sort of digital computer. But the activity of one of the simplest brains in evolution suggests it might work in a very different way. What's really surprising is what happened like right here, when there's activity going on in the nervous system of the animal without any apparent movement, without any apparent contraction. If you wanted to upload the mind, you need to be able to decipher it or download it first. The best analogy I have for the brain is that the brain is like an orchestra that every time it composes a, a plays a tune, the tune itself changes the instruments of the orchestra. As the scientific search for the butterflies of the soul intensifies, we are still to discover if our consciousness could ever be replicated in a machine. Another body would probably be a hologram-like, and I envision my consciousness just moving from one to another. We are now embarking on a journey into a very different world. Whether we find we can live forever in machines or not, for some the journey will certainly change what it is to be human.
Many of these ultra-wealthy and elitists and those who are willing to really sell their soul out to the devil are very serious about these methods and they are putting their full-fledged faith in cryogenics, transhumanism, singularity, or putting our brains into robots. But in the end, they will discover that their faith has been badly misplaced. Let's see what the Bible has to say about this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37, Jesus Christ himself says, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, For it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. We clearly see that we are living in the last days, and these are the signs of the times that Jesus spoke about in the Gospels. Jesus warned us through the prophets of old that there will become a time that will be a rise of the fourth kingdom, the beast system, where iron and clay will try to mix and become one. The iron representing technology, the clay representing human beings, and the two will try to become one flesh. And that's where we have the days of Noah. Jesus told us that as in the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Folks, there are people willing to marry and give in to marriage into these diabolical technologies that seek to override the gifts of God that He made possible for us to receive and obtain eternal life through the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. These are Antichrist technologies and people with the spirit of Antichrist that are uh, giving promises of eternal life without repentance, without judgment, and with false reward. Give your life to Jesus Christ. The day of the Lord is at hand. It is not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. Get saved. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The days are getting darker, and the times of the end is without a doubt upon us. The rescue mission that we are on to save souls in this world is urgent. But I must be straight with you. We find our ministry right now in a type of rescue mission in this present hour. Friends, we have a right now urgent financial need to help continue this important work. We do not have mega corporations or government grants helping our ministry in any way unlike many churches of today. But we like it that way because it keeps the word of God free from compromise and reproach in this end time ministerial work. Now, of course, that does not mean that we are free from financial obligation that must be met on a monthly basis to keep our online church ministry, our broadcasting, our school of ministry, our websites and servers, and, and basic expenses to keep this needed ministry going strong. It means not going your way anymore. It means not trusting in your own efforts. Some of you say, you know what, I think that if I was to die tonight, I think I'd make it. Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus Christ is Lord, and he is coming very quickly. He's going to plow in this end-time harvest. Folks, we're plowing in the end-time harvest. We're plowing. We're not looking back. We're plowing in the name of Jesus. Put your hand next to us and plow right along with us so that we can get this work done. And that is where you, our precious viewers and partners, come in. Friends, I'm asking for your financial support to give to the work of this end time ministry as best as you can in a way that you have not done before or maybe ever done before. Now, I've always said no donation is too small or too large to help support the work of this ministry, and I mean it. Of course, however, the more generous amount you can give brings much more of an immediate relief to our need. Friends, we offer no gimmicks for your donations, but what we do promise is kingdom results. We promise to continue sounding the alarm that the day of the Lord is at hand. We promise to preach the word of God by the power of God's Holy Spirit, unadulterated and uncompromising to a lost and dying world. We promise to teach the word of God in sincerity of truth and the fear of God. Can we depend on you today? Please give securely on our website at www 
www.emoaf.org. www.emoaf.org. I'll even ask, would you consider being a monthly donor? Friends, I don't mean for this request to be so lengthy, and I certainly did not expect to bring a broadcast like this, but for the ministry's sake, I'm glad. And I give God praise that he has graced me to humble myself by his Holy Spirit to do so. It is in great reverence and respect in the fear of the Lord and his Holy Spirit. Thank you for hearing me and for helping support the work.